everybody. My name is Valerie Carter and you're watching Dear America with Love. I've titled this video, The Enemy Cannot Cross the Bloodline. And um, I'm going to kind of tell you where I kind of got this from. I got it from a dream. God's so good. Um, I love it when he gives me dreams. Um, it's my favorite way of him speaking to me. Um, but of course, he can speak to us in any way, shape, or form. Um, he's spoken to me even through commercials. So I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to share this word with you. So, Father God, we just come before you, Lord. We give you glory and honor and praise because there's no one like you. You're so good. You're everywhere. You're all-knowing. You're powerful. You're still seated on your throne. And, Lord, there's nothing that happens in this earth that you don't see, Lord. Yeah. And we just, I just, I just, just praise you. Because you are worthy to be praised, Lord. I love you because you first loved me. You demonstrated how much you loved me. So I thank you, Lord. I pray that you be in this word and that um, we have ears to hear, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Okay. I don't know if you can hear it. My dog is snoring in the background. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> gosh, I can't even remember when I had this dream. It was, it was recently, but not like super recently. And um, um, I, I, I had kind of, before I had this dream, was questioning the Lord. Like, hey, wow, you know, we plead the blood of Jesus and, you know, we do that. And I began to look up scripture so that I make sure that I'm praying the actual word of God. It's just better to pray the word of God than to make stuff up. So I was just like, what does it mean? And the word of God says that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word, right? The blood of the blood of Jesus, it just speaks a better word over us. And of course, when Jesus shed his blood on the cross for us, it, it redeemed us, it rescued us, it saved us, it, it, it's now protection over us. And um, I think if you go to Exodus chapter 12, um, I'm going to start with that story. So the Israelites are enslaved in Egypt and Moses has gone to Pharaoh over and over and over again and plague after plague has come and God was like you know Pharaoh is just going to keep hardening his heart he's not going to let them go so God says you know what? I'm going to send one last final plague and um, the people what their instruction was was to take a lamb and they were to um, kill the lamb and take the blood and swipe their door with the blood. And what was going to happen was, is it says that the that um, the Lord went through, basically he went through Egypt. And if you had the blood on the door, he passed over. He, he, he just passed over and the firstborn lived. But if you did not have the blood to protect you, he went through and the firstborn was killed. And, you know, that was as a result of Pharaoh's hard heart. And, you know, it wasn't just the children. It was also the animals and so forth. And, you know, here the blood protected the people. Death couldn't touch them because the blood covered them. Does that make sense? So I was having this dream. And there's a lot to this dream. And I'm just going to kind of break it up. It's extremely interesting dream. And, um those of you that are really love interpreting dreams, you're going to just kind of go crazy over this dream. But I basically have, I'm, my dreams are always in San Francisco. I have no idea why God chooses San Francisco to be um, the place that I call home in my dreams. I grew up there. Um, my family goes back generations. And in San Francisco, it was one of my first homes. I lived there until I was four or five. So I'm in San Francisco, I'm on a cliff, and I have a house, and um, it's like the Swiss Robertson family house. It's like, you know, the tree house, but rather than being on the rock, it was actually embedded in the rock, and, um, and my husband and I are saying goodbye to San Francisco, and we go down the stairs, and we go to the beach, and there's these jagged rocks, and we're basically saying prayers, we're praying, and um, I looked over to my left, and like a tsunami, the, the water goes back right, right before the tsunami, and it becomes really calm. And I look over to my left, and I'm like, oh, it's the calm before the storm. And I knew as I looked over to the left, 
something was coming. But then I look over to the right and I could see my house up on the right and um, and to the right is my house and to the left on top of the cliff are two tigers, an orange Bengal tiger and a black tiger. Now this black tiger was clearly a tiger. It still had the stripes. It was black on black stripes, but you know, you could still see the stripes. I, when I, and my spirit perceived in the dream, I'm basically getting the interpretation as I'm dreaming this dream, that this, this tiger is stronger, hungrier, it's mightier, more powerful, it's faster. It's everything more than the orange Bengal tiger. And in fact, I, I, I was like, this is an assassin spirit. This is the kind of tiger that will catch its prey torture it by playing with it but but torture it in a in a in a in a vindictive evil way and then it would annihilate it so i see the tiger the tiger sees me we make this exchange that we see each other and then i just kind of ignored it and i start walking back to the beach walking the beach and about 10 feet from the shore is a white picket fence that i have to cross over into and that's my property line and um, as I start walking, my husband and I are walking, I look over my shoulder and this black tiger is now full force running after me. And it's, it's ready to annihilate me. It's, it's so evil and vindictive. And I don't even react. I see that it's running and I just continue to, to walk. And um, I walk up to the picket fence. I turn around, I put my finger up and I say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, and I step into the property line. I step past the gate, past the fence. And it was as if this black tiger hit an invisible wall because it, it came up to, you know, catch me. And it bounced off the wall and it disappeared and I woke up. And I woke up going, whoa, Lord, that was amazing, right? Um, I think I said this in another video. This is obviously tiger, it's not a lion. But what I love about this is this scripture, uh, I think it's in James. Um, I'm gonna just double check, ouch. Yeah, oh, sorry, not James. It's in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse eight, and it says, be sober and be, be vigilant. So, you know, be mindful. There's an enemy out there because he is your adversary. He is seeking to devour you. He's roaming around like a lion, not a lion, like a tiger, not a tiger, that he may devour you. So when I began to really dissect this dream, I just kept hearing the Lord say, the enemy cannot cross the bloodline. The enemy cannot cross the bloodline. And he, he, he basically said, I want you to start praying that. I want you to start praying that. And I was like, wow, okay, Lord, the enemy cannot cross the bloodline. The Israelites, the people of God, we are the people of God. When you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, when you repent it from your sins and you say, okay, I'm going to turn from my ways and I'm going to turn towards you, Lord. You be my Lord and Savior. We are now the people of God. We are now his people. So when the enemy comes in like a roaring lion, when the enemy comes in to assassinate us, we are covered in that blood. And guess what? He has to pass over. He cannot pass through. He cannot touch us. There's more for us than against us. So um, what I love about this, I'm going to actually show you a, an application of this. So my friend calls me one day. Hey, girl. And um, she has just moved. She's moved out of state. And she's got this beautiful, I think it's three and a half acres of property. And there's trees and bushes and dry grass and everything. And it's just, it's just phenomenally beautiful. And um, we were on the phone and the Lord told me, share that dream with her. And so I shared the dream with her and I said, the Lord was like saying, we need to pray that the enemy can't cross the bloodline and blah, blah, blah. So uh, we hang up the phone and she goes and she's decided, I'm going to go pray this over my property. I'm going to pray this over my children. I'm going to pray this over my husband. She anointed the property with, um, you know, with oil, I believe. And um, Isaiah 10, 27, the anointing oil breaks the yoke of the enemy, right? It's, it's just a symbolic act of, again, the enemy can't cross the bloodline. So 
So she went and prayed and within a few hours, her property is now on fire. Her neighbor next door decided that he was going to throw out some hot ashes. Well, these hot ashes caught fire on his property. Again, we're talking dry, grassy bush, right? And um, she had just got done maybe an hour or two praying for her property. And so his fire, his property catches fire. Well, now it starts coming towards her property and her grass starts catching fire. And the way it's laid out, it, it basically went in this line, I believe, and it catches fire, but it's literally stopped at a, um, a pile of dry wood, you know, that you would use for fire, fire, your fireplace, you know, um, s'mores, whatever. And then it keeps going a little bit and it goes towards her pump house and it stops at her pump house. It, it goes and um, it stops right at, at the line of her trailer that is parked in the driveway. It stops. She has three and a half acres of dry brush and it never caught fire. It literally went to a short distance and stopped, short distance and stopped, short distance and stopped. Then the firemen come and they're like, holy moly, this should have caught on fire. We have no idea how this even, how this even happened. Like your property should have gone up like on both sides. And I love her boldness. She tells the firemen, well, I literally just prayed for my property and God protected it. And the enemy can't cross the bloodline. <laughs> And I love that because she took and she applied the very word of God to her life and, and to her property, to her property. It did not catch fire. Why? Because she had already put over herself the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cannot cross the property line. Just like in my dream, when I spoke the name of Jesus, that tiger hits a wall and now has disappeared. Why? He cannot cross the blood of line. I am covered by the blood. You are covered by the blood. We are marked by God. And when we are covered in his blood, we are protected by his blood. I love this because when we apply the word of God, when we actually pray what the word of God says, we see God move. We see God um, promise what he says. And he says, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. We are marked by God. We get to wear his signet ring. We have the authority over the enemy to vanquish him, to stomp on him. You know, it, my same friend <laughs> had a scorpion in her house. And she sends us a picture, a group picture of, of me and another friend. And she sends it to me. I'm like, should I go all scripture on you? You've been given the authority to stomp on um, you know, scorpions and serpents. And, and at the same time, she's texting me and she's like, I just stomped on it, right? <laughs> I love it. Why? She's applying the word of God. Now, do I do, do you need to actually go up against the lion like that one crazy guy did? No, that's not what I'm talking about. But in the spiritual realm, we have authority over the enemy. When we use the name of Jesus, when we tell we we tell ourselves and we, we 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 plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus in the morning and at night over my family, over my cars, over my homes, over my bank accounts, over my dog, over of course over my children. Um, <laughs> but dog does not come first before my children. But um, when we plead the blood of Jesus, the enemy cannot cross that bloodline. He just can't. So I hope that this word encourages you. I hope that you apply the very word of God to your life because the word of God is life. It is powerful. It is his very word. He is not a man that he should lie. So if he says it, it will be done. And if he says that you are covered in his blood and you are protected by his blood, the enemy has to pass over. He cannot pass through. So apply the word of God. I cannot say this enough. Open your word. Open your word. When you open your word, you're literally hearing the very word of God. You're hearing his voice. If you think you can't hear God, start in your word. It is, is, it is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. When we use the word of God against the enemy, guess what? He cannot cross the bloodline. You have a blessed day.